Man, and I use the term loosely. Ah, welcome back. Happy New Year. Uh, continuing on with the ongoing saga of oil pumps uh, leaking through and filling up the crankcase. Um, this is the upper cover uh, on the one that I had been doing the leak checking on. I've done a little modification over here to hold the seal in. I'll, I'll show you that later. But anyway, uh, this has proven to be 100% effective in stopping oil from easing up around that shaft filling up the area behind and below the breather, rotary breather, and oozing out into the crankcase and filling up the crankcase. So this is good. This is 100% good. It worked. I'm happy with that. The problem is with this pump body. Uh, when I had it set up in my test rig, oil was oozing up out of this hole right here. Well, the check valve was right down in this area. The problem, I believe, is that this seat is chowdered up and the ball was not sealing correctly, allowing oil to, you know, uh, leak through here, bypass the gears, uh, go through this hole, and, and ultimately come out over here. Uh, the reason I think it's chowdered up is because this hole right here, uh, which was drilled to connect this hole to the fitting, this fitting, which is where the pressure switch or the oil pressure sender would plug into. Um, this thing has been, you know, machined, welded on. Uh, this area in here has been resleeved. And uh, the problem was when I resleeved it and redrilled all the diameters, I drilled the seat. Uh, the, the seat for the check valve actually intersects with this hole and I'm pretty sure that's why it's not sealing up. Anyway, this particular oil pump body is uh, getting relegated to the junk heap. At this point, I don't think it's repairable anymore. I've assembled another pump body with a body that appears to have a uh, good check valve seat. Okay, pump is in the uh, test setup. Uh, lines are hooked up, blocking plate is on, gaskets are in. Uh, ready to put a little Ford ATF in it and see what happens. And there we go. This is where the oil was leaking out of before. Well, in the first test, oil was coming up out of here and oil was coming up out of here. So uh, hopefully this thing is going to be bone dry over the next several days. Uh, that's the plan anyway. We'll see what happens. Okay, it's the uh, next day. Uh, it hasn't been 24 hours, but it's been 20 and it really doesn't matter. Oil is oozing up out of the uh, port that transfers uh, output from the pump to the crankcase. So it's oozed up out of here, it's soaking my string that's holding the trip bucket, and uh, the check valve is leaking. Uh, this area, this area in here, uh, where previously oil was welling up out of the uh, rotary breather sleeve, uh, is, is perfectly dry. So uh, this part of the experiment is still working. This is the second time I've tested this with the seal in the uh, uh, pump body over here. Uh, this time the seal has a retainer that's pressed in and I'll show you that later on. So this part is a success. Uh, the Harley part of it, the part Harley designed, <laughs> is still a failure. Uh, I got a couple thoughts on that and I'm going to retry this at least one more time and believe me I'm getting tired of fucking with it. Uh, I might be wrong about this but I'm going to throw it out there. Uh, I think one of the problems or one of the reasons why that inlet check valve is leaking is this. 
from the funnel down the tube to the pump is uh, three feet, pretty much. Uh, on the motorcycle, the distance from the top of the oil level in the tank uh, to the pump is about 15 inches. So I think that means the pressure acting on this check valve is twice as much as what it would be on the actual motorcycle. So I'm going to do two things. I'm going to shorten the uh, supply tube to about 15 inches and I'm going to look at the springs uh, that sit behind the ball. Uh, as I seem to recall, I think I've seen at least uh, at least two, maybe three different part numbers and different uh, different tensions, I would suspect, on the springs. So we're going to take this part one more time, uh, clean the oil out of it, shorten the tube, and I'm going to see if I've got any uh, springs with a little more oomph on them to uh, seat the ball and the pump. I'm going to make one more attempt to uh, work on the check ball seat. Uh, you're looking right down the throat of the check ball and it's going to be hard to tell um, uh, but there's kind of a frosty gray line uh, that's where the ball is seating on the seat. Uh, it had previously been lapped in with my ball welded to a rod. I'm going to lap it a little more and then I got another ball I'm going to pound into there to just, you know, try to seat the ball in there uh, to keep this thing from leaking through. Uh, I got a flashlight shining through the feed port. Uh, otherwise you can't see anything in there. But anyway, we're going to give it a try. Okay, got your steel ball on the end of a rod, welded on the end of a rod, lathered up with valve grinding compound. Okay, going to do this for about three minutes, pull it out, and call it done. Alright, I got a kind of a random old ball out of my scrap bearing thing. Let's drop that in there. Let's uh, give it a couple of smacks. I don't know that I could do anything else to this seat to try to make it better. We're going to call that good. Uh, now for the spring and the ball. Uh, this ball and this spring is what happened to be in the soil pump when I started screwing around with it. This one, this one, and this one were laying around in my bag of old oil pump parts. I got keys and uh, split rings and things like that in there. But anyway, uh, these just were laying around in my stash. These two were brand new in a bag along with two brand new balls. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the part number of these. Just feeling them uh, the tension on them. This one here actually feels like the stiffest. Um, so I don't know. I think I'm going to put this one and the ball in this thing and, and see if it matters. Uh, anyway, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to give it a try and see how it works. Uh, I'm set up for the fourth iteration of this test. Uh, in the previous tests, I filled the tube all the way up to the middle of the funnel here. From the middle of the funnel to the inlet on the oil pump, down here is about 36 inches. Uh, on the motorcycle, the inlet or the oil pump to the level of oil in the tank is about 15 inches. So for this test I'm going to fill it up to here to more closely simulate the installed in the motorcycle condition. Uh, I'm thinking that due to the extra length of the tube up here I had twice as much pressure 
on the ball in the spring than the stock arrangement would normally be. So we're going to fill it up to about here. Uh, this is the fourth iteration of the test. In the first iteration, it leaked like a sieve coming up from around the bottom of the rotary sleeve. It also leaked like a sieve from the check ball. In the second iteration of the test, I did kind of a prototype installation of an oil seal at the bottom of the rotating sleeve and the upper pump cover. Uh, the oil leaking up out of the cover stopped completely. This continued to leak like a sieve. In the third iteration of the test, I had my oil seal installed in the bottom of the cover over here with a retainer uh, because the seal easily came out and I didn't want it popping out while the engine was running. So there's now an aluminum retainer pressed in here with Loctite 518 to retain the seal. Uh, this was still good, bone, bone dry, no oil come out up at all. This still leaked, although not as badly. Um, I had switched pump bodies between the third and the fourth test. Uh, that were doing no between the second and the third test. I had switched pump bodies, so the third test and the fourth test are being uh, uh, are being done with the same pump body in it. The reason I did that was because the other pump body was all jacked up, and I didn't hold any hope for it sitting at all. So we'll fill it up to about here, uh, and we'll see what happens. Well, I got a little more than I would have liked. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and go with that and we'll see what happens. And we'll mark it just for a point of reference. All right, check back in a day or so. <laughs> 24 hours later. Fucking thing still fucking leaks. Uh, seating the check ball in here uh, for sure and getting a good seal has proved to be virtually impossible. Uh, I give up on this. Whether, you know, it's a problem with this oil pump body and this seat. The seat looks good. The ball looks good. It's got a proper spring in it. Uh, it's frustrating to say the least. So although the huge leak over here was fixed, uh, the huge leak over here was not fixed and uh, I give up. I admit I can't fix it. Uh, you know, I may try this again uh, the next pump that rolls through here and I got two motors sitting here waiting to get started on that both have pumps. Uh, damn it. Uh, anyway, I uh, can't fix this. Fix this easy. Well, if you got a lathe and a milling machine, etc., etc. Can't fix this. Yes, I am a glutton for punishment. I dug through my pile of old springs and I found a spring that was uh, pretty stout that just happened to fit in the pump. It is not a spring that belongs in the pump, but it's a spring that's easily three or four or five times springier than a spring that came out of there. Um, back when I did the little segment of this video about the springs, uh, there were at least three different lengths of springs uh, that I found that I all believe to be oil pump springs. Uh, who knows really if any of them were. Uh, they don't have part numbers on them. So I ordered off of eBay. I found a guy selling NOS OEM Harley Springs in a sealed plastic bag. And I bought some. So right now I'm just trying to decide, well, right now I'm just trying to prove whether or not the spring is the actual problem 
versus some kind of subtle damage to the ball in the seat that isn't really detectable with the naked eye. So I've got this really stout spring stuffed in there right now. Got the test set up, hooked up again. This is number five. Obviously, I wouldn't run an engine with an unknown spring in there, but we're going to experiment a little bit. And you probably noticed in the other video, I just jammed the hose into the discharge port and the uh, uh, Ford ATF, you know, if it's leaking through, will rise in here. And I suppose uh, it can only rise up to the level in the tube, you know, they'd equal out if it got was leaking severely. Anyway, uh, we're going to let that sit and fester for a while. Then we'll check back on it and see what happened. <laughs> Alright, day later. The fucking thing is still leaking. Uh, good lordy, I got a spring in there uh, that I popped out of the front axle of a locomotive and the oil is still oozing past the ball. Uh, I'm flummoxed. I'm gobsmacked. Ah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna mark this. And uh, we'll check it again tomorrow. But obviously I haven't fixed the problem. I just want to get an idea of how fast uh, it'll rise in there. And FYI, the seal at the base of the rotary uh, breather over here uh, still is bone dry, not leaking a drop. So uh, the breather problem is fixed completely. I, I've got no concerns about that at all. Uh, but you know, is this normal? Do all of the pumps just do this? Um, the seal, excuse me, the seat and the ball look good. Uh, I see no reason why they should be leaking. Uh, you know, do they reach a point and just stop? Do they continue to leak? Uh, is this filling up your crankcase too? I don't know. I got some more pump bodies. I'm going to let this fester for a few more days. Uh, and I might try another one later on. But for purposes of this video and what I was trying to achieve, that is get a good seal on the base of the breather, that is done, that's successful. Uh, there needs to be a way to make sure that this check valve in here does not leak. So uh, I'm going to continue working on that because it, it really kind of pisses me off. There's no reason that oil should be bypassing over there. See, it looks good. The ball looks good. I got a spring in there with way more tension on it than the stock springs would have. Uh, I don't get it. Uh, I got to figure it out. It's driving me crazy. All right, here's the uh, finished part. Uh, it doesn't look like much, but this is kind of a tricky little bastard to make. Uh, ideally, the outside diameter will be a press fit, a light press fit inside here. Ideally, this shoulder sticking out will be a light press fit in here. Uh, of course, it all has to be concentric because if it's not concentric, the seal won't run true on the shaft. Uh, not a lot of room to work with on this thing. That's a small part. Uh, small parts are hard for me to do. Uh, but anyway, uh, this is the finished deal. Uh, let's put a little sealer on it and uh, squish it together and see how it fits. Trying to smear it around or as even as I can. We're going to make the open lip side face the oil pump. Let's get the extra shit out of there. I'm 
going to goober this up with some Loctite 518. It's probably way more than it needs, but uh, we'll wipe the excess off of the inside. Try to smear it around a little bit and get it even. That should do it. We'll turn it over and drop it in. We'll be using the official uh, seal retainer installation tool, a deep socket. And a couple of wax should seat it in there. And there you go. The seal is just about flush with the uh, top of the oil pump cover. Well, actually, that's the bottom. The bottom of the oil pump cover. So, uh, there you go. Uh, this has been demonstrated to work. Uh, when this is installed, there's no leakage whatsoever between the rotating shaft and the seal. No oil is able to enter uh, your cam chest via this opening anymore. So this, this is 100% effective and it works great in my testing. I'm not going to officially give up on the uh, check valve seats on these oil pumps. Um, I think I've gotten, I, I don't know whether these could be uh, repaired. They're, they're both jacked up. I don't know whether I could get them. Uh, repaired uh, well enough to use uh, or if anybody has any suggestions of what to do with the check valve seats uh, to make them work um, I certainly am willing to hear it so uh, uh, you know take a look at the contact information down below and uh, shoot me a message shoot me an email and uh, let me know what your ideas are and uh, I certainly uh, want to consider it, uh, consider alternatives to what I've been doing. Because obviously what I've been doing isn't working. Man, every good story has to come to an end sometime. Um, so I think we're going to call this the end of this video series. Uh, the goal when it started out was to identify where uh, the oil getting blown out of your crankcase was coming from. So I think uh, I positively identified two sources, uh, one of which was the one people are always suspicious of, oil oozing past uh, the outlet check valve on the pump and oozing into the uh, uh, oil galleys and just seeping out everywhere and eventually filling up the camp chest. Uh, the other source, uh, not commonly uh, suspected to be a problem, was the uh, drive shaft uh, for the rotary breather. Uh, that thing leaked like a sieve. Uh, in the initial experiment, uh, it, it didn't take 30 minutes and I could visibly see oil oozing up and running out of there. And uh, the second part of the goal was to correct the problems, whatever they might be. Uh, I honestly didn't expect to see the check valve seat leaking. Uh, I honestly did expect to see oil oozing up out of the uh, breather shaft. Uh, I got a fix for that. There's a seal that can be put in there, a little retainer that can be made. Uh, that seems to be 100% effective. Uh, I've tested two different pump bodies five times. And uh, after the fix was put in, uh, the following four times after the fix was put in, it didn't leak there at all. So I'm confident that was fixed. 
Uh, as far as the check valve and the ball seat and all that goes, uh, you know, Edison tried 6,000 filaments uh, before he got a filament that worked good for a light bulb. So, uh, you know, who knows how long I could dick around trying to find uh, the combo that fixes that. I mean, I've tried different oil pump bodies, different springs, different balls, seating the ball, lapping the seat, uh, cutting the seat. I mean, uh, you know, I, there's a lot of combinations to go on that one. So uh, that might be something that gets figured out in the future. It's not going to figure it out now. So I'm calling this little project, this little experiment, uh, over and done. Uh, I could do the uh, uh, seal installation on an upper oil pump cover if you want me to do it. Uh, but uh, there's no guarantee that that's going to fix your problem 100% because the damn check valve is likely to leak. Uh, so anyway, for now, uh, I am out of here. Uh, I'll catch you next time. Uh, thanks for walking, watching. Uh, thank you all you Patreons. Thank you subscribers. I'm getting dangerously close to a thousand. Uh, Dangerously close to a thousand. That'll be nice. Uh, and I do have some more fun with oil pumps uh, planned for the near future. Um, I've got to have a, a few more oil pump bodies to test. And uh, I've got some repairs in work for some of the uh, junked out ones I have that should make them good enough uh, to experiment on. Anyway, take it easy. We'll see you later. Happy New Year, and I am out of here.